It is good to see you and good to hear from those on the stage. <laughs> we'll see whether the rest of you wake up along the way or not this morning. Thank you for being here today. Uh, though we still are missing some, we are glad that you are here. Are you glad to be here today? Yes. There you go. That is so important. And uh, looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us. Hopefully some more will still come trickling in. Trust that you have your bulletin. Let's get it ready and review a couple of items this morning and get rolling today. First of all, uh, as Daniel was sharing with me, let me pass along to you a word of encouragement. Daniel's mom, as many of you know, was here last week for a short visit and came to Sunday school and here for a short time uh, as we were getting ready to start the service. And she enjoyed being here and you guys made her feel at home and welcomed and that really helped her during her span away from home. And hopefully it makes her want to move here. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But that's okay. But you did your part. You planted the seeds. And so there you go. And uh, that sure meant a lot to Daniel as well, knowing that not only did she get to come and visit him and be a part of our church, but you guys really made her feel so welcome, warmed, and loved. And you didn't tell on Daniel on everything he knew. So that was good too. But uh, anyway, we were certainly glad that she got to be here last week, and thank you so much for the warm way you responded to her. Let me call your attention to a few items in the bulletin, and it seems like it's been so long since this has happened, but we have the ladies' Bible study starting again tomorrow night. At uh, the, the study starts at 6.30. Ladies will meet at 6 and eat. And so let me remind you ladies about that starts again tomorrow night here at the church. Also, you see the events coming up in August beginning as early as this Wednesday, the 4th. And that is our youth lock-in. And then the Central Texas District meeting in Tomball on the 14th. FWAC meeting on the 28th. And then our meal of the month on the 29th. So you guys please be aware and be informed and involved in each of those events. Let me go ahead and jump ahead because of uh, uh, the importance, I guess, and significance of this coming up in September. And that is our senior banquet. Now I don't have a sign-up sheet for it yet. Uh, we'll probably have one by this coming Sunday. And that is we will need each of our seniors who are planning to attend our banquet to sign up for it so we'll know how many to count for, plan for, and that is on the 18th. And as you see, we've actually given you the theme for our banquet this year. We try to come up with a different theme every year, and uh, so this one is going to be Wild West. Let me just tell you, especially uh, Charles and John, let me get you to emphasize on Wild West, not wild. Okay? Just so you know, it's not wild, it's wild west. Alright? But uh, anyway, we're looking forward to that on the 18th, and we'll ask our seniors to sign up for that. We have made this an annual event, and it has been a lot of fun, wonderful time together, and hope that many of you will plan to come. And if you have someone, listen, as, as we say about any and everything we do at church, Every event that we do should be seen as an opportunity for us to reach out into our community, into our family and our friends, our network of people, and invite them to be a part of it. And this senior banquet is no exception. And so certainly feel free to invite someone to be a part of that with us, but let us know so we can plan accordingly. All right? And uh, that is, uh, there, I think there is a typo, I may be wrong, but I don't think the meal of the month for September is casseroles as well as in uh, August, but we'll get that corrected. I don't think that's the case. Hey, it's pasta, so it's an impasta, is that what you're saying? I think that was a typo meant to just torment me, but I don't know, we'll see. So... <laughs> So that is it for your announcements for today. If you have questions about, oh, sorry, in the, in the bulletin, there's one more I wanted to announce. I brought it up here with me. And uh, Joe, if you would stand for just a minute. You ain't got to give a speech. I just want everybody to see who you are. Most people know you, but sometimes we don't get to know everybody as well as we should. And so Joe has been part of our church for quite a while. Thank you, Joe. You can you don't have, you you can stand for the rest of the service if you want to, but you don't have to. But uh, this is Joe Moylan, and uh, uh, Joe is part of a bike club 
That is, uh, let's see, Brass Valley Chapter 735. There we go. And they are doing a fundraiser ride on September the 11th for St. Jude Hospital. Now, we don't tell about all of the events that we're a part of in here on church, but when they're special and worthwhile events, we do. And, and certainly, St. Jude Hospital, Children's Hospital, is a worthwhile event, and any fundraiser for them is worth our time and attention. And so, number one, if you have a bike, not a... Uh, a bicycle, but a motorbike, and you would like to ride along with them on September the 11th and certainly see him, and he'll give me the details of that, and I'm sure they would welcome you uh, to ride along. I don't know that any of our bikers are here this morning, but we do have a couple others. We got one that's thinking about getting a bike, but uh, or unless you got one this weekend, I don't know, Brother Doug, no, Dr. Doug, you mean... All right, so uh, if he gets his bike, then see you'll have a doctor in the club if he rides with you. But there you go. But anyway, um, and if you if you would like to help sponsor them for this ride, then see uh, Joe as well. Again, that is on September September the 11th, a fundraiser for St. Jude Children's Hospital. They do a lot of great things, as you know, and uh, and so we can give you more information about that later. But thank you, Joe. Uh, if you have questions, certainly see him about those uh, questions. Thank you so much. Let's take a moment and go to the Lord in prayer. If you're willing and able, stand. And let's pray. Are y'all awake this morning? Amen. 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 All right. Well, let's, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the day you have given us. Thank you for the sun uh, that is shining and the daylight that we are able to enjoy. Thank you, Lord, for the breath that we breathe. Thank you for the greenery that we've been able to enjoy even this late into July here in Texas, which is unusual. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have to come and to worship you. And thank you for these that are healthy and able to be here and desiring to be here as well. God, I know that we live in trying times and we know that there are a lot of issues that people are wrestling with, dealing with, and working through. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege that it is to be together as a family of God, to come together and worship you and to study your word. God, remind us that that is what we are here for today. We're not here just to hang out. We're not here to fellowship. We're not here just to do our religious duty. We're not here to um, scan our phones and spend time, so to speak, just sending messages and all of that. We are here, Lord, to worship you. And I pray, God, that you would captivate our hearts and our minds and help us to make the most of this time, pouring ourselves into the moments that you have invested uh, in us with by giving us this time. And God, help us to invest ourselves into this time. Help us, Lord, to sing the songs with a, a, a pure heart, a clean heart, and a great focus and concentration on who you are. And the truth is, Lord, if we see you, and if you are truly lifted up, as the Word says, you will draw me into you. And God, you will minister to our hearts and you will make your presence and your power known. And that is our desire. We don't want to go through the motions today. Doesn't matter who is here, who isn't here, Lord, we are here to worship you. And we want you to be exalted. We want your will to be accomplished in our lives collectively and individually. So Lord, may you move. We invite your presence and your power and your will to be accomplished here today. And we promise, Lord, to give you the glory and the honor for it. And we give you thanks now. We pray for your direction in all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please be seated. higher ground, 462. I'm
463, I am thine, O Lord. 463, we'll sing the first, second, and last verse.
the very part of that. The people like Anthony and the other young folks is heritage back here. They have influence on young folks that, again, things are just normal. I've said this all along. You know, they play on the TV forever. And people are this forever. You don't even know it's wrong. It's just, it's just normal part of life. You know, I'm not afraid to open your eyes to what yes. we've never experienced. Things just, we're not outdated. We're not. But all this stuff needs to come to it all leads to that wide path that everybody's going in. Everybody's going in, so it must be all right. But we need to be on that narrow path. I want it very difficult. I want it to go see very many people on it. And you sure they're going to be made fun of the people on that path. But everybody else is taking me to I've heard of people like that to be in the middle of the day. They can stand and talk to the best of their way every day because they're telling the truth. Young folks are just, it's, it's normal. What's wrong with you? That means what's wrong with you? Very different. It's not them. You open your eyes. We pray to do the same thing for these others as well as the other people in the world, right? But I really feel for the young people. The young people that a lot of the parents don't want to be parents. They don't even want to keep them out of right and wrong, with respect, not to steal, like Jesus. Uh, you can give me that stuff. Make me go because one you got in my hair, you're okay. Father, that's not the way it's meant to be. Father, I pray that somehow, some way we are able to reach people out there that are so, so lost. So, so, I didn't need God all this time. I don't need Him now. It's just a horrible, horrible life in the devil with the people out there. I pray, Father, that you will open our eyes of America again, that they make their nation of greatness again. It can happen, but it will not. That we, as a nation, humble ourselves and pray to you. And that time you will hear our prayer and you will heal it. But it will not be until we humble ourselves and pray to you. Every one of us, from top to bottom, that tonight, we do. Father, I thank you that we have the opportunity to still come into this house. Come as a congregation to sit here in unity, praise the one and only true God in America. Father, we thank you for your heart and we pray for you. We pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I ask you to stand. Go to number 446, leaning on the everlasting arms. 446, and it's in all three verses.
time at this time. We prepare to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Regina, would you ask the question, please?
To live below with those we know. Now, that's another story. Well, the truth is, uh, the Bible does teach us to love one another, not necessarily like one another. You know there is a distinct difference. And I believe, though, as we grow in our love for one another, we actually can learn to like the people a little bit more as well. Amen? But we find that in our world today, suffering can lead to selfishness, and struggles can lead to isolation, and we find that more and more today with the concerns with COVID and now this Delta strain. By the way, I like what I read someone said. Um, said, who is worried about Delta when you know the Alpha and the Omega? And that is so very true. Now that doesn't mean that we take a, ca a callous, careless um, practice or approach to COVID because we know that it is real, but it does mean that we have greater faith in our Lord than we do fear for this COVID virus. Amen? And I think that is certainly how God would have us to live. But in our world today, we find that Fear is causing great isolation. We find not only in our church, but in many other churches that attendance is certainly down, and a lot of it is due to concerns about this COVID disease. Well, we know what God's Word says, though, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, about us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And what I know is that God knows we need to come together for corporate worship, and the study of His Word. We need this time together. Amen. Now, I know that sometimes we get a little bit hard-headed, we get a little bit distant in our relationship with God, maybe a little bit uh, wayward, backslidden, whatever phrase you want to, to, to use. And then in those times, we don't feel that we need the worship uh, of God together. We don't feel that we need to come to church as much. But you need to understand that when we are in those moments, it's not God making us feel that way. It's the enemy himself that's leading us down that path. Because God has clearly led us and taught us and instructed us in His Word what His intention is and what our spiritual needs are. D.L. Moody wrote, Show me a church where there is love and I will show you a church that is a power in the community. I think he caught on to something and he realized something very real that I think that we have, in many cases in our world today, missed and lost. And maybe even as Anthony spoke this morning in his missions moment, maybe part of the, re the, the reality of this great country that we are losing is maybe because of the lack of love in the church. Maybe. Maybe it's partly. I'm not saying it's all of it, but maybe part of the, the reason that we have are falling so far, it seems, from grace and God's design and God's providential care and direction in this great country. Maybe it is because of the lack of love in the house of God. Paul prayed for the Thessalonian believers to increase, as we saw, and even, not just increase, but even overflow with love for one another and for everyone. Now, this is worthy of our attention. That's the reason why I selected it for our study this morning. And again, I said earlier, Paul used the word agape, which is that godly, unconditional, sacrificial love of God. And he wanted them, and I believe that God wants for us to increase in this love to the point that we are overflowing in this love. Can I get an amen on that one? Sometimes I think we just, as long as we get along, then we're content, we're satisfied with that. We live in a very different age than what many of us grew up with and around. And it seems that so many people are satisfied with their separation, their isolation, and their distance. Just, you know, as long as we get to come together and greet one another and experience our church service and then we go on about our lives and our home and our week and our business, then we're okay with that. But I think that we're missing out a lot of what God intends for us on an individual basis and certainly on a collective basis yeah. in the house of God. And it says something, by the way, when it's time for a church to be dismissed and people scatter, you know, like, like roaches when the lights are turned on and Motel 6, no, it wouldn't be Motel 6 because they left the light on. I'm just kidding. But anyway, it's something like that, you know, and 
as opposed to you know that time, that lingering time of fellowship visiting one another you know and, and and nowadays it seems that people come into the service late so they can avoid the greeting and then as soon as the service is over or maybe even before the final prayer is done people are going out the door as fast as they can so they can hurry up and go eat because the preacher's gone over, amen? And maybe even going out the side door or the back door so they can avoid contact with other people. I'm meddling, I know. But that's the problem that we wrestle with today. And what does that do to the face, if you will, and the health and the vitality of a church body? Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, not only... Or does that point out a concern for what does it do to one, but also clearly what does it reflect about one? And I think we obviously can read between the lines on that. Now, by the way, in our text, it doesn't mean that the Thessalonian believers did not already love one another or demonstrate love. Let me call your attention to what Paul had previously said in chapter 1, verse 3 about these same believers. He said, We recall in the presence of God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor motivated by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, let me say, Lydia, you're not lost. I haven't gotten to point number one yet. There's a, a lengthy little intro, and we'll get there, okay? So nothing new there. Uh, I didn't want her scrambling and wondering if I'd lost her somewhere. All right. And so then again in chapter 3, our text that we are looking at today, but in verse 6, Paul said about these same believers, but now Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news about your faith, remember this, and love. He reported that you always have good memories of us and that you long to see us as we also long to see you. So I want you to understand when Paul addressed this in the Thessalonian believers, he was not rebuking them. But yet he was encouraging them and he was praying that God would cause or bring about within them individually and collectively that that love for one another would increase what they already had and so much so that it would be overflowing. Would to God that every church that calls itself a church under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ would experience such a blessing as what Paul prayed for for the Thessalonian believers. That there was so much love within that congregation that it was overflowing. Now, I don't know about you, but I think if I were a lost person and I was considering going to church and I had some inkling of interest in spiritual matters and I thought I might be searching for God... I saw Christina waving her hand back there. <laughs> then I think that that would kind of be the church I'd want to go to, amen? Yeah. I'd want to go to a church where I felt like, man, not only did they love me, but they really loved each other, not they just put up with each other. That'd be the church I'd want to be a part of instead of one where it seems like people don't really care about each other. They just go on for their service and they go about their own separate lives and it seems like there's tension and disputing and disunity and all sorts of other issues. We see this truth that we see in our scripture is very significant. And what Paul writes in our text is right on the heels of Paul praying, as we pointed out last week, for their faith in verse 10. Paul knew that for their love, for one another to increase in their church, that, listen to this, it would not happen by chance or by accident. And I believe we need to listen to this truth here today. I think Paul would say if he were able to visit Fellowship Free Will Baptist Church and any of our other churches in our community or in our country or in our world today, he would say this same prayer I would pray for you, but I want you to know it's not going to happen by accident or chance. Yeah. You're not going to grow and increase in your love for one another so much so that it is just overflowing just because you come to church. Paul knew that for their love for one another to increase in their church, it, that, that they needed the intervention of God and they needed to do some intentional things in their own life. Why is this important? Paul knew that during the time that they were facing, we talked about this leading and through this study of 1 Thessalonians, 
and the struggles and the temptations and the persecution and the trials that they were dealing with. He knew that they were facing these things and that they would need each other more and more. And that he knew that this love, this ever-increasing love for one another and for everyone else was going to be essential in their health and their vitality and in their spiritual life, growth, and development. Hmm. And I just think about that. If that was true for them, how much do we think that that would apply to us? Well, you know, it's a different time. Hmm. Just think about the day in which we are living in. And I just addressed some of the issues that we are wrestling with on why people aren't attending church yet today. You see, people today are hurting, and COVID has become a great hindrance to church attendance. Yeah. Can we not at least recognize that? According to an article that I read in the recent Fusion Family magazine, in case you don't know what that is, that's a uh, Randall House publication, and they gave out some samples of it at our national convention, and uh, certainly they are available for you to read. But um, in a art, or in an article that was in about uh, close to, I think, the middle of that magazine, that was their newest one, I found it interesting and applicable to share with you today some interesting details that it presented in there. It said that in spite of our technology and social media, which is run amok today, I'm telling you, man, I mean, yeah. wow, <coughs> let's not even chase that rabbit, but in spite of the reality of social media and the freedom and the frenzy of all of that, it said 50% of baby boomers, 71% of millennials, and 79% of Gen Z. How many of y'all know who Gen Z is, by the way? Yeah? You know who Gen Z is? That's our youngest generation. That's our little ones that are in here today. Okay? So, let's see. Um, Danielle, and Faith, and Abby, and Anthony, and Diana, and Tevi, and Harper, and Gabriel, and Logan. Am I missing any others? Uh, Lizzie went to the bathroom. Yes, Lizzie. I was looking at those who were in here. Aaron. Yes, Aaron. Thank you. Anybody else? You guys are Gen Z. And according to that, 79% of Gen Z, you know what they all have in common? All of those percentages, this article says, according to the study, feel lonely. Feel lonely. Now, I can see that on some, particularly the baby boomers. But 79, the highest percentage of people in this study that feel lonely are the youngest ones. And they are the ones that have totally embraced and are totally enveloped by social media. And yet, in spite of that, they feel lonely. That raises an interesting reality and awareness for us as a church, doesn't it? You see, the truth is, even in our world today, we need to value people above our schedules, above our programs, above our preferences, and even our personal comfort and agendas. Yeah. And if we fail to do that, we fail them. And we fail the Lord. And we certainly are not living up to what Paul prayed for about that the church would be increasing in love so much so that it is overflowing in love. I don't know about you, but I long for that yeah. for our church to ever be the case. Not just in a period, not just a once in a while situation, and not just because of a particular event, but I long for that to be the total expression and demonstration and description of our church. Don't you? I thought about even Pete. I got excited. I got to tell you guys, I'm going to tattle on Pete and I uh, hope I don't get him mad at me, but I don't think I will. In our men's prayer meeting this past Tuesday, uh, Pete brought me to tears. Now, I didn't show it as much when we were talking, and, but as we broke into our prayer time, I literally was in tears because of something that Pete shared. Now, this is going to seem so insignificant to you, and it's not going to matter to you like it did to me as the pastor. But Pete shared something in his heart that God had laid on him for him to do 
And, uh, and, and this was not initiated or primed by me whatsoever, okay? I didn't do anything of it other than just the continuous teaching and praying and leading as a pastor. But he shared that something he was going to start doing, and I asked him this morning, did he do it yesterday, last night? And he said he did. So there you go. And that is that he on Saturday night was going to call at least one or two people that is not here or has not been here lately in our church and to let them know that he's missing them and he would like to see them in church tomorrow. Now, that's not all that Pete is doing for the church, by the way. By the way, let me remind you, this is a good time to kind of segue into this or chase a rabbit for a moment. You know what this week, starting today, is? It's the first week of August, yes. Yeah. But it also is the first week of the month, which means it is the week for our Lights Out initiative. What I mean to say by challenging you with that is, is that I've asked that all of us, the first week of each month, make sure that somewhere along the way in that week that we seize the opportunity, make an opportunity, whatever you want to call it, but that we share our faith with someone outside of our family or someone that needs to know the Lord. Share your faith. Now, that, that doesn't mean just invite them to church, but share your faith. So there's your reminder, okay? There's your igniter for the Lights Out Initiative. And Pete felt that God was leading him or he had this vision or passion to start taking a little initiative. He's realizing that we have a lot of people that are out, that aren't coming, that, that, that we've been missing. You, you miss those people? Maybe some people that you don't even know because you don't know who they are. You haven't had the opportunity or taken the opportunity to get to know them. And he wants to seize that and just start priming that a little bit. Man, I'll tell you what, that, that just... You say, you're a baby. Why would you cry over that? Because... That shows me that the Spirit of God is working and that He responded yeah. to what God was leading and laying on His heart to do. Amen. And it's not something that I have to officiate or initiate. It's something that God is doing. And I, I love seeing the hand of God work in people's lives. Amen? Amen. And so it, and it was at a time where I needed it. I'm just going to be honest with you. I needed that encouragement. And it really blessed my heart. And so, we need to generate and provide the opportunity for us to be that kind of place where that our love for one another and for everyone is not only increasing, but overflowing. I want to focus on that this morning. You say, well, you're doing a pretty good job of it. Good. And I haven't got into our study yet this morning. So, so, what was Paul's game plan? Paul's game plan, according to our scripture, was to pray. Paul prayed that they would increase and overflow again with love for each other and for everyone. Why am I continuing to say that? Because I want you to catch what Paul called. And that was that they needed to love each other. They needed to continue to love each other. They needed to continue to increase in that love for each other. So much so that it flowed and overflowed, but not just for them. It wasn't just for those in the congregation. You notice he said, and for everyone. You see, the truth is, it's easy to love those that are lovable. It's easy to love those who love you. It's easy to love those who like you. But it's another thing altogether to love those who seem to be the unlovable, isn't it? And the truth is, the only way that we are going to ever be able to do that and not just have a speck of it, a hint of it, but to be overflowing in it, the only way that's going to happen is if God is doing something in our lives. Yeah. By the way, let me say to you, in, in response to what I just said about Pete and, and some of the things that I sometimes hear, let me, let me just backtrack for just a moment. Sometimes I hear people say, hey, why is those so-and-so not coming to church? Or why haven't they been here? Or what's going on with them? And you know, most of the time I don't give you much of a response except for, well, why don't you call and ask them? I'm not trying to be smart alecky about it. I, I promise you I'm not. But number one, I'm not going to violate someone's confidence that they have shared and entrusted with me for whatever else is going on in their life. And it's not my place to be the little ABC or NBC reporter and give you all the lowdown. Amen? That, that sounded a little bit harsh, but would you agree with me? Do you want me going and tapping to everybody else about what's going on in your life? No, you wouldn't want that. And you wouldn't have any confidence in me. But here's what I do know that, I'm going to chase this for just a second, that if we as a church member have an interest in someone and what's going on in their life or why they're not here, and if we, instead of talking to each other about it, which is usually not going to help anyway, 
is not going to get back to that person in a helpful way if instead we talk to that person, whether it's a visit, a text message, an email, or a phone call, or a card to say, hey, I care about you. I'm missing you. I'm not trying to get in your business. I just want to make sure you're okay. How much more do you think that's going to mean to them? By the way, you know that I typically make a practice of sending a text message or an email to let you know, hey, we missed you, I hope you're okay, but I'm not asking you what's going on in your life. You know, it's just a way of opening the door if there needs to be any communication and letting you know, hey, I missed you. But you know, it mean, it mean a whole lot more from you if one or two or three other people in the church that wasn't the pastor did that, wouldn't it? You'd be like, hey, wait, I was missed. It makes you feel loved, doesn't it? Imagine if that happened with you and you missed because you were sick or you were away or... You just play hooky. And suddenly, you got 10 text messages or emails or phone calls. Not them getting in your business, but just letting you know that they cared and they missed you. Wouldn't that make you feel special? Wouldn't that make you feel loved? And somebody right now, I guarantee you, somebody right now has said, well, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to bombard people. I don't want to be pestering people. Is it pestering? Just to demonstrate that you care? Again, how you do it is important as what you do. Amen? But here's what I know, that if an individual was missed for one service and suddenly throughout the week, maybe they had 20 or 30 people saying, hey, we missed you, we love you, it might be an element, a tool that God could use in their life to bring them back and give them a desire. And it might be a reflection of a love that is increasing and overflowing instead of, hey, we're just glad you're here. Amen? Amen. Put yourself in that position and what would you, what would be meaningful to you? I shouldn't say what would you like, but what would be meaningful to you? And I believe that would be meaningful to every one of us. All right, let's get started with point number one. That's our intro. We're not getting very far today, so let's do number one. We need, number one, to supremely love God. I thought about in preparation for this, and obviously I don't have the time to dig into, but you've got to consider Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. And I believe that there it is right there. Revelation 2, 4 and 5. I know most all of you are very familiar with this passage of Scripture, but it certainly is relevant at a time like this. And the Scripture says, But I have this against you. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. Otherwise, I will come to you and remove your lampstand and its place unless you repent. Well, you know that this is part of the letters to the churches. And in the initial verses where there is the commendation for the good things in that church, then there is this stunning staggering, alarming recognition from the Lord that this church, though it's doing lots of good things, has lost or left its first love, which is the Lord. And can I tell you that as a pastor, as a minister, and as a child of God, someone who has been in ministry now, as I thought about it this past week, it's a little bit scary almost that now I've been in ministry for, a, I could say, easy 30 years now. That sounds like so long. It makes me sound old. I know. <laughs> but do you know that it is easy sometimes to get so called up in the work of ministry, it's easy for you to lose sight of what you're doing it for or who you're doing it for. And I know if it's easy for me as a minister to find myself in that position, that that is true also for those who aren't ministers. That that's not your full-time calling, so to speak. And the warning in that scripture is that you need to recognize your first love, and that is the Lord Jesus. And you need to repent and you need to return. What I want to say about that is, you know, the truth is it's easy as a church member, it's easy as a Sunday school teacher, it's easy as a Bible study leader, as a worship leader, a nursery worker, you fill in the blank. It's easy sometimes to just go through the motions of going to church because that's what you're supposed to do. And that's what you've been doing. You've been doing it for 30, 40 years or whatever, so you keep doing it. It's easy sometimes to be doing the right things but not really doing it for the right reason, isn't it? 
and lose sight of what it's all about, and that is a genuine love for God. Let me call your attention to think back for just a moment to the moment when you got saved. You didn't know everything. You still don't know everything. Just a little reminder. But you sure didn't know it all then. And there was so much you needed to learn. But man, when you gave your heart to Jesus, man, you were excited about the Lord, right? And you loved God and you loved His people. And there was just this, and I'm not talking about the emotion, but there was just this overwhelming awareness of the love of God and being loved by God's people. You wanted to be with God's people. You wanted to love God's people. And you wanted to love God. And you just wanted more and more of God. That, isn't that true? Yeah. But as time goes on, we lose sight of that nearness and that dearness of God. And we drift a little bit away from who He is and what He is to mean for us. And we all have our reasons. We all have our excuses. We all have all sorts of things that we could blame for it. But the reality is that is the inevitable reality that happens in most everyone's life. Can I say to you as your pastor, first of all, that there is absolutely no way in the world that you and I can even begin to accomplish what Paul was praying for the Thessalonian believers if number one is out of order. It's all a facade. It's a pretend. It's, it's, it, we're, we're winging it. We're faking it. And we can be as polite and nice and sociable as we want to, but we will never achieve what Paul wanted for the Thessalonian believers and what I believe God wants for us today if number one is out of order. Because this is where it starts. We cannot love one another. We will not love one another. And we certainly will not be overflowing in love for each other and for everyone else if we do not have our love life with the Lord in the right place and healthy environment. I love what Max Lucado said. He said, if God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. If He had a wallet, your photo would be in it. He sends you flowers every spring and a sunrise every morning. Whenever you want to talk, He'll listen. He can live anywhere in the universe and He chooses your heart. Face it, He says. He's crazy about you. I love that. Why? Because it is a reminder of how much God loves us. And why is it that we are so loved by God, yet we find ourselves drawn away and drifting away from Him towards other things? Because we lose sight of how powerful and how wonderful His love is and how blessed we are. And we take Him for granted. You see, I want you to realize that our love for God, our love for God, is demonstrated by our love for one another. When you show agape love like Paul was talking about in our text to someone else, you are reflecting the work and the glory of your Creator. And when you fail to show that love, then you are failing to show the glory and the work and the hand of your Creator. And maybe it's a reflection of the lack of that relationship and the sweetness of that relationship with I've got several things I want to accomplish through this sermon, but it obviously won't happen today. But what I do want us to do is think about that point, number one, and that is our relationship with the Lord, our love for the Lord. And I, I just want to close this morning by asking you to think about where you are with your love for the Lord. Why are you here today? Why are you doing what you are doing? And when you came in this morning, what were you feeling? What were you thinking? Now, I'm not trying to pick at you because I don't know your head and your heart. I just know some of the things that I deal with sometimes. But did you come into the house of God this morning because you were anxious to be at the Lord's house? You were anxious to be with God's people you were anxious to worship God and you were anxious to spend time together 
with the body of Christ and knowing and loving on the Lord. Or were you just going through the motions? Were you just here? Was there any anticipation? Was there any preparation? Was there any expectation? Those are sobering thoughts and questions, aren't they? Because the truth is we all can find ourselves in such a place that we take church and the Lord for granted. Yeah. Anthony talked how earlier wonderful a country it is. And one of the greatest in his presentation, and I agree, one of the greatest reasons that this is such a wonderful country is because we get to do what we're doing here. Right? Amen. Amen. take that for granted. And I'm afraid we take the Lord for granted. When's the last time that you didn't rush through a prayer just so you could go to sleep or eat your food or go about your business? When's the last time you just blocked everyone and everything out and spent time alone with God? The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we're so busy with that social media that we were talking about earlier and all of the other things in our life, we don't really have much time for God. Can I encourage you this morning to check the love level in your life for the Lord? Not somebody else's. Don't say, boy, I know somebody needs to hear. No, no, no. no. <laughs> this is where you need to be introspective. Yeah. Just think about you. Think about your relationship with the Lord. <clears throat> what does God say to you this morning? You know He loves you. Even as Max Lucado says, just picture the big fridge in heaven. And your picture is right there. I know that's kind of silly, but that's, an, that's a, just an imagery, a reflection of what God thinks about you. Shouldn't we love Him too? Yeah. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the time you have allowed us with this morning to study your word. And there are so many other things yet for us to learn and to apply to our lives. And I pray, God, that you would continue to help us to be open and receptive to your truth. And Lord, I know that you desire that your body of believers would be overflowing with the love of God. The love that you have for us and we would share that love with others. But it cannot get beyond our love life with you. There is absolutely no way in this world that we will ever increase in our love with others. And our love for everyone outside of this body. We're not tending to our love with you. And so first and foremost, God, I pray that you would speak your truth into our hearts. I'm not threatening any condemnation or criticism or judgment this morning. I just invite your spirit to do your work in our hearts and help us to make an honest inventory of our lives. And Lord, I, I just invite you to have control this morning. Help us to lay aside for just a few moments all of the other things that might bid for our attention and all of the concerns that we have for everything in our lives outside of this moment. And God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to us. Help us, Lord, to hear you. And help us to respond as you see fit. Not because we think that so-and-so needs to see or hear, or not because we think Brother Doug, no, because you speak, Lord. And may we respond to you, I pray, in these closing moments in Jesus. Would you stand as Marcus leads us in a song of invitation? And I just invite you to listen and obey as the Lord is speaking to your hearts.
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.